Hey guys, as many of my subscribers are already aware, this channel is mainly about more tech-based car modifications, which aims to make older vehicles more modern and more feature-rich, like more modern vehicles you find on the road these days, such as my head unit project over here. As much as I would say this is a step in the right direction for keeping older cars on the road for longer, there's still one glaring issue, and that's ha just how expensive and closed car diagnostics are these days. However, have you ever wondered if car diagnostics could be made free? or at least a lot cheaper. I'll give you this scenario. You own an expensive and complex car, much like most modern German cars these days which have well over 40 or 50 control units in them, and your car seemingly out of the middle of nowhere decides it's going to go into limp home mode. You scan the car with your generic scan tool such as these little generic OBD readers, and it shows no error codes because the problem is not with the engine's own control unit. So what would you do in this situation? Would you bite the bullet and take your car to the dealer for a full diagnosis, which could be potentially be very expensive? Or do you go and buy one of those third-party diagnostics adapters such as Carly in order to deep scan your vehicle? Or if you're crazy, do you scour eBay for knockoff Chinese adapters with pirated diagnostic software in an attempt to diagnose your own vehicle? For years now it seems that unfortunately these tend to be your only options for vehicles that are out of warranty. However, thanks to a little company in the US called Machina, and my project Open Vehicle Diag, this could all soon change. You see, Machina creates some awesome open source OBD2 adapters, which are programmable with the standard Arduino libraries. This caught my attention, so I decided to write a diagnostic API driver for their M2 adapter, and eventually ported that driver to their new and cheaper A0 adapter. This diagnostic driver allows these adapters to be utilized by any car diagnostic software that implements the pass-through diagnostic adapter protocol. This includes software such as Zentry Pass-Through for Mercedes or Toyota's TechStream. What's even better here is that if you're into car hacking, these adapters are multi-use. You can use my driver to do your car diagnostics, and then happily write your own code to begin car hacking your own car, or writing a custom data logger. Whatever you want, the sky's the limit with these adapters, it's awesome. Now, talking about diagnostic software side of things, this is where Open Vehicle Diag comes into play. Open Vehicle Diag is supposed to be a cross OEM, cross platform diagnostic software which works on Windows, Mac, and even Linux. With Windows, you can utilize any pass through adapter such as Bosch's VCI adapters or my Machina driver. With Mac OS X, you can only use my Machina driver since it unofficially ports the pass through API to Linux and OS X. And for Linux users, you can either use my Machina driver with one of Machina's adapters, or you can use any socket CAN compatible device. Since Open Vehicle Diag is supposed to be cross OEM, it has no idea what car it's plugged into when it is launched. Therefore, I've created an automatic scan based on this research paper, which is able to scan and locate all diagnosable ECUs within a vehicle, rather than just the engine ECU, which is typical of most OBD2 generic scan tools. Once this scan is complete, you can manually run commands on every single ECU that it found that was located in your vehicle, such as reading and clearing error codes or reading various data identifiers. But it gets better than that. There is also a custom JSON schema that has been created as part of Open Vehicle Diag, which is designed to be an easy to understand replacement for most OEM's proprietary database formats for describing ECU commands interpreting ECU responses to diagnostic commands. Currently, there only exists one parser that can automatically generate this JSON, and that's from old Daimler CBF files, which is used by their older diagnostic software, uh, Diagnose Assist Service, or DAS. The JSON schema is well documented, meaning if you really wanted to, you could happily create your own JSON file for your own car's ECUs if you know exactly how they operate. Enough of this explaining. Let's show the software and hardware in action. For these following demonstrations, I'll be using Machina's adapters with my own software, but I'll prove it works with Mercedes' entry software stack to prove that the custom driver I have built is compliant with the pass-through API. I should note now that these demos are going to be higher level, and I'll be releasing a much more technical and detailed video about how the whole system works on the channel at a later date, so stay tuned for that. Anyway, on with the demos. So, for the first demo, I'm going to read and clear some diagnostic trouble codes from my engine ECU and show Open Vehicle Diag communicating with my transmission ECU, all with Machina's M2 module. Since my engine is currently in perfect health, I'm just going to unplug the mass airflow sensor and also the boost pressure sensor and plug them back in again. This will just make the ECU store a couple of error codes. 
Okay, so to begin with, let's take the Markina M2 and plug that into VCAR's OBD port. There we go. You will notice there is a red light on that that indicates that it's ready, but currently there's no application utilizing it. If we go ahead on the laptop and fire up Open Vehicle Diag and then select the Markina M2 under the dash and load that, you shall now see that the light is now green indicating that we have an application using the adapter now and as you can see on screen now you have various adapter information indicating what adapter and firmware version on the adapter etc as well as which protocols are supported by the Markina M2. Now I just want to very quickly go over the CAN analyzer view so if I click this and say connect you can see a list of CAN frames currently present on the car. Any changing data is in red. If I go ahead and start my engine you shall now notice a lot more data appearing on here now that the powertrain network is online. Now showing the diagnostic scan mode, so if I go ahead and launch manual mode and I shall open the JSON file for my ECU that I've created, which is CR3 up, go ahead and open that. You can see it's identified, it's a Bosch ECU, it's, ver it's identified the diagnostic version on it, and also gives me the connection parameters it's using to connect to the ECU. If I go ahead and read ECU information on here, you can see the hardware software build date as well as the production date of the unit and the part number. Now since I unplugged the mass airflow sensor and boost pressure sensor, if I go ahead and read errors, you can see here we have three error codes, so 0105, 2025, 2024 and 0100 which is in German for some reason. but I don't know why. You can have a look that all these in errors here are in a stored state indicating that the ECU at some point detected this error and it hasn't yet come back. If I go ahead and click on any of these error codes I can go ahead and read the freeze frame data from the ECU about each individual error code on here which is all nice and good for diagnostic information if you really want to have a look at what the engine was doing when the error code was tripped. We can go ahead and clear error codes and give it a second and there we go, no diagnostic trouble code stored in the ECU. If we go back and read it again, no diagnostic trouble codes, meaning that now the ECU is clear of errors. Now focusing back on the main page, I can actually select a list of functions here. In this case I've got dt 212 a already highlighted, so I can show it to you, but you can essentially search for functions to run on the ECU which are present in the JSON file. So if I quickly go ahead and search for 212A, because I want to show you this, this will show me a list of values from the ECU regarding torque and absolute consumption. If I go ahead and say begin graphing, it will basically update this value in the right side of the screen. It will update the same text but in the right side of the screen three times a second. Now since the whole point of this project is that you should be able to diagnose every ECU in your vehicle and not just the engine ECU as previously shown, you can go ahead and select the ECU JSON here and in this case I shall select EGS52 which is the transmission in this car select that and there we go it connects to it so EGS 52 diagnose version 51 vendor is Siemens in this case read ECU information here all well and good as expected read errors here no ECU errors detected that's great and again we can go ahead and query some interesting information okay so here in EGS 52 I've selected DT2137 I will be renaming these functions in my CBF pass to something a bit more useful in the future but anyway if I go ahead and begin graphing on this and then begin to play with the actual transmission lever here so you can see the driving program code changing as I'm pressing this button here I can go ahead and move the selector lever and you can see the select lever position changing Now for the next demo I shall be using Markina's A0 with Open Vehicle Diag to communicate with a much more modern vehicle which utilizes the UDS diagnostic protocol I shall be doing this in order to read live data from the instrument cluster module. Okay, so here we are in a bit more of a modern car. This is a Mercedes W246 from 2018. And in this case, we shall be using the Markina A0 because it supports CAN. So if I go ahead and plug this one in. There we go. And then on here, select that we want to use the Markina A0 and press connect. I see this is connected, we're reading the battery voltage from the vehicle correctly. 
Now again, if I go to CAN Analyzer here and press Connect, you can see there's a lot more CAN data here, and also you can see the Mercedes Me Connect warning on the instrument cluster, now that it knows that something is probing the car, which is to be expected. Going into the diagnostic view, I can go ahead and launch manual mode and load the JSON save file for the instrument cluster in this car, which is IC172. We shall open that up. And here we go. Now this is using UDS rather than KWP2000. We've put the instrument cluster in diagnostic mode. It knows it's a Bosch and it knows the IC the version name here. And we have a bunch of interesting functions we can go ahead and run. So I shall try running these and having a look at what some of these do. Now I should note that again something else on the to-do list for the CBF pass is to translate all of the strings in the CBF files from German to English or any other language of your choosing because currently that's all we support is just reading the strings as they are which is unfortunately all in German. Now to prove this works with real diagnostic software and that it also supports Windows I decided to flash my spare on desk ECU that I use in streams using Daimler's own software called Videomo, and using my Markina A0 with my special pass-through adapter driver. On Windows, there is an optional log file located here. I'm currently opening this up now so that I can view what Videomo is requesting the adapter to do. As Videomo is opened, the log files show that Videomo is utilizing the A0. This text here also proves that Videomo has successfully loaded the adapter driver and is happy to utilize the A0. As we see from Videomo, this ECU is currently in boot software mode. This essentially means that the ECU is in a bootloader state with no application being executed on it, which would normally use to be control the engine. Now I go to the flash interface within Videomo and select the appropriate CFF flash file for the ECU and press start. You can see from the driver logs that a lot of activity suddenly starts to occur and after a while the data transfer to the ECU begins. From here on in, the ECU is accepting the data and begins to flash itself. This process takes about 6 minutes, so I'll speed it up. Now for the last 1% of this progress, the ECU is validating the data that was sent to it with a checksum, and returns the result back to Vediamo to verify that the ECU was flashed successfully. Now, reconnecting to the ECU shows that it has a DIAG software loaded onto it. This means that the ECU is now able to control an engine and is no longer stuck in its bootloader state. I hope this proves that the adapter is fully compatible with Windows as well as commercial diagnostic software which utilizes the pass-through API. So, to conclude, Open Vehicle DIAG has so many more features that are not demoed in this presentation. Please, if you haven't already, do check out the videos in my Open Vehicle DIAG playlist linked below, and also check the video description for all the links and references used in this video. As mentioned in the video previously, there is still loads to do, so over summer I shall be improving the application, adding more features, and even potentially writing other file passes for other car manufacturers' data formats so that Open Vehicle Die can be utilized with many other car brands. If you haven't already, do like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye!